How to get a flat stomach in a month at home without equipment. Anyone that has tried to lose weight can testify to the fact that stomach fat is particularly difficult to shed. Ironically, it also seems to be one of the places that excess fat likes to store itself. So whether you are trying to get a flat stomach for the aesthetics or because of the medical risks attached to having a protruding tummy, chances are you already know that you have your work cut out for you. However, the fact that tummy fat is difficult to burn doesn't mean it's completely impossible. And in this video, we'll be showing you a number of ways you can lose the tummy fat and get a flat stomach without going to the gym or using equipment. Before we go ahead with the video, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. We upload fresh content regularly, and you sure wouldn't want to miss out on all of that. All right, back to our video. Probably the most important thing to focus on when you're trying to burn the fat on your stomach, or basically anywhere else on your body, is to modify your diet. Notice we didn't say that you should go on a diet, but that you should modify your diet. And here's the difference. To go on a diet, you basically have to do an overhaul of the food you eat, while a diet modification would just be making a few switches to enable you to achieve your goal. The former is not sustainable, while the latter is. And trust us when we say that you want sustainable, because you do not want to lose the fat in a month and then gain it right after. So what modifications are we looking at? First off, as much as possible, reduce your intake of refined sugars. Replace your soda with water. Take fruits instead of store-bought fruit juices and limit your ice cream consumption to the occasional treat. You also want to try to avoid high calorie drinks as those only pump in the calories and typically have little to nothing else to offer. Aside from sodas and store-bought fruit juices, other culprits include alcoholic drinks and milk-based coffee drinks. You don't have to eliminate alcohol and coffee from your diet though. Just limit the amount of sugar and milk you add to your coffee. And instead of making your mixed alcoholic drinks with regular soda, consider using soda water. You'll come to find that these little changes can add up to make a huge difference for you. An adjustment you can make, which really doesn't have anything to do with food, is moving more. Yes, to get that flat stomach, your life cannot revolve around your bed and sofa. You have to move around. You could try walking to the store close to your house to get something instead of having it delivered to you. Consider taking the stairs up and down instead of the elevator. Try parking farther from your office so that you can walk the rest of the way. And if you work from home or are just usually at home, you could set a timer for every hour to remind you to walk. You could also walk around your house a couple of times or do chores. Just do anything that will get you moving. You could push yourself some more by incorporating a bit of cardio into your daily routine. Cardio does not have to involve the use of equipment, so don't get discouraged. In fact, a number of things you love to do can be counted as cardio. For instance, you could dance for about 30 minutes or go for a run or go swimming if that's accessible. Basically, any activity that gets your heart really pumping could be counted as cardio, and cardio has been known to help burn calories and trim a person's midsection. It doesn't hurt that it's good for the heart too. Now back to the diet modifications. How much fiber do you eat? Consider eating it and here's why. Fiber helps you feel fuller for longer. So if you incorporate more fiber into your diet, you could actually eat three times a day, but still eat less than you would if you didn't have fiber. Something else fiber is good for is digestion and bowel movement, which is important because sometimes the reason one doesn't have a flat stomach is because of bloating. Fiber would help fix that. And the interesting thing is, you don't have to substitute it for something else. You could just add it to whatever you currently eat. Foods that contain fiber include vegetables and beans. So you can see what we're talking about. As you increase the amount of fiber you consume, you might find it easier to reduce the amount of refined carbs that you take in, and that is definitely a good thing. Carbs are good and the body's major source of energy. However, not all carbs are inherently good. And even if they all were, an excess of them would be stored as fat, which is what we're trying to avoid. Refined carbs like the ones you'll find in white pasta and white bread usually contain more carbs than whole grain varieties. Circling back to exercises, yes, you should do some more. So consider adding some resistance training to your cardio. In keeping with the theme of this video, you don't need equipment to incorporate resistance training into your schedule. Your body can be all the equipment you need. Some resistance training exercises you could try include squats and lunges. As you do your resistance training exercises, remember to focus on your core muscles. Exercises that will help target your core muscles include push-ups, planks, sit-ups, and burpees. Now back to your food intake. Consider keeping a food diary. 
Of course, the very act of keeping a food diary won't reduce your waistline, but it could help you keep track of the food you eat. It is easy to underestimate how much you eat in a day if you're not presented with cold, hard facts. And some of the foods that slip through the cracks of our acknowledgement are those little things that we snack on throughout the day. Religiously writing down everything you eat immediately after you eat it would show how much you consume in a day, and this might even guilt trip you into making better food choices. Still talking about food, because it is usually the biggest culprit as regards to an expanded waistline, consider eating slower than you usually do. If you eat too quickly, you're not giving your brain enough time to decide whether or not the stomach is full. So you could end up eating way more than you should. Slowing down your eating pace not only allows you to savor the food you're eating, it'll also help you eat a bit less because your brain has the time to process the feeling of fullness. And we are back to exercising. There are some exercises that are referred to as high-intensity interval training, HIT. As the name implies, HIT involves doing high-intensity training in short bursts that are interspersed by brief resting periods. Apparently, these kinds of activities, while really tasking, have been known to help significantly reduce a person's body fat. Unlike your cardio and maybe even your resistance training, you don't need to do HIT every day. Two or three days a week should be able to do the trick. Now, back to food. We mentioned earlier that bloating could be one of the reasons a person has a protruding stomach. That said, you usually get bloated, gassy, or constipated because of food sensitivity. So it's important that you rule out that possibility. To do this, you'll have to pay attention to the way your body reacts when you eat certain foods. If you can identify the problem, discuss it with your doctor and let them help you come up with a solution. Additionally, start drinking more water. In fact, you can pause this video and go drink a glass of water. Water could help do away with the bloating, making your stomach appear slimmer. And it doesn't hurt that water is healthier than a lot of the other liquids we take. In addition to taking care of bloating, drinking a glass of water before a meal could serve as some sort of portion control, as it'll fill up your stomach a bit, encouraging you to eat less. There are a number of apps that are designed to remind you to drink water and to track your water intake. Consider getting one of those if you need help. Also, if plain water is too boring for you, you could infuse your water with cucumber, berries, or citrus fruit to give it some excitement. Also, you might want to consider getting a water bottle. There's one more thing we need to add to all the exercise recommendations we've given. Do not do your exercises while sitting. This is because it's more difficult to engage your core while sitting, and you really need that core engagement if you're going to get that flat stomach in a month. So stand, squat, or lunge as you work your biceps, triceps, and shoulders. Just make sure you're not sitting. With all that's been said about food and exercise, it is easy to think that all there is to getting a flat stomach. However, there are two other things we want to share that aren't related to eating or working out, and one of them is sleep. Yes, to get the flat stomach that you so desire, you need the right amount of sleep. Now, sleep is a tricky thing because too much of it could speak of inactivity, and inactivity fosters weight gain. But too little of it could affect the hormones that are responsible for a person's appetite, making the person more hungry during the day, which of course could lead to weight gain. That said, it isn't just about the quantity of sleep, but also the quality of sleep you get. So you want to try to get between 7 and 8 hours of uninterrupted sleep every day. And by uninterrupted, we mean no random waking up in the middle of the night. To achieve this, there are certain life adjustments you need to make, including trying meditation during the day, exercising regularly, keeping electronics out of the bed, turning off the light when you're about to sleep, and avoiding caffeine and alcohol right before bed. The second thing is to manage stress. Stress eating is not a foreign concept, and overeating would usually lead to waking. It also doesn't help when we stress eat. We usually reach out for the unhealthiest of foods. So managing your stress level is actually really necessary if you want to get that flat stomach. To do this, consider trying meditation every morning. Talk to a loved one, seek professional help if you need it, take a break or a vacation, and try not to overwhelm yourself with tasks. To end with this last point, don't allow the drive to get a flat stomach become a source of stress for you because you'll end up fighting against your own body, which would make the whole journey take more than a month. You don't have to immediately implement all the ideas that we've talked about in this video. Pace yourself and only take on as much as you're able at a time. You'll start to see the results eventually. Remember that it is the little drops that make a mighty ocean. Finally, please be kind to yourself. You're doing the best you can. 
Comment down below your thoughts, give this a like, share with your friends, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to keep you updated for more interesting facts, tips, and ideas from Smartville.